to the service today and let's praise God like we've never praised him before. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. How about you? Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Amen. Everywhere I go. Today's scripture is from Psalms 139, verses 13 through 16. And it reads, For you were formed in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there, there was none, none of them. God word is blessed. Amen. Amen. Now it is time for altar call. Yes. Where you can freely come to lay down your petitions before our God. Where you can freely come to stand in the gap for someone else. Where you can freely come just to say thank you. So at this time, we'd ask that you please come to the altar. Yes, Lord. Come to the altar.
is good all the time. As we stand before the altar, just uh, thinking about all the things that we, we are encountering, going through, getting ready to go through, in the midst of all that, I still want you to say thank you. Thank you. So we want to say a prayer of thankfulness to God because you're here to go through it. Amen? Amen. And you're here to have that as a testimony. So as we bow with our eyes closed and our hearts humble, think about all the things that God has done for you. Not what you're going through right now, but all the things that he's brought you through and all the things that he's doing for you right now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we stand before you today, we say thank you. Thank you for where you brought us from and where you're going to take us. You are God all by yourself. And Lord, it's, a, it's our desire, Lord, that we be a, a good representation of you. So when people look at us, they can see you. They might not know what's going on, and they might say that there's something different, but Lord, it's, it's you in us. Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We give thanks to you and we bless your name, Lord, because you're worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness throughout all the generations, Lord. Lord, we pray today and we always want to give you honor. Lord, and we thank you for your light and for your truth. And Lord, we, we hope that that continues to that light, that we allow it to continue to lead us and to guide us. Lord, we stand and we continue to ask you to remind us of all that you've done for us, but also, Lord, to remind us to, to study, to show ourselves approved. Lord, because when we do that, we know that we got you right there with us. So, Lord, we thank you in advance, in advance, right now, right now for what we're getting ready to go through, Lord, what we're coming out of, Lord. We thank you for the burdens that we're going to leave right here on the altar right now. That when we go back to our seat, Lord, we won't leave them there. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy that you allowed to uh, impart upon us each and every day, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless us, continue to keep us, Lord, continue to lead us, continue to guide us, Father, Continue to give us that yearning, Lord, to want to know more about you. Because in the midst of reading your word, there's always something new each and every day. So, Lord, we just ask that you continue to give us that that that, that unction, that, that prick, to just say, mm, Lord, I want to just get to know you a little bit better. And you're like, wow, get to know him a little bit better. Because every day is something new with you, Lord, every day. So, Lord, we just ask you to bless us. Thank you for those who are here right now standing at the altar, standing in the gap. Lord, those who are on their way, Lord, I pray that you just lead them and guide them here safely. Continue to bless us. Continue to lead us. In Jesus' name. Can we say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, amen.
Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy. Aren't you glad? All right. Children's Church for ages uh, two and middle school and up will uh, begin immediately after service. You can see myself or Reverend Tim uh, if you like to uh, participate in any kind of way. 
New members orientation will meet uh, immediately following services today. Sister Carrie is over there, right? Amen. Sister Carrie. Encouragement team will be meeting. Amen. <laughs> Sister Barnes is over there, so amen. Our Compassion Center will be closed today. The Compassion Center will be closed today. Copies of the worship service are available immediately following the service today. We just ask, uh, you can see a media team member. We just ask that you give them a little, about 10 or 15 minutes to get that together for you. Reminder to tune in to WYLL 1160 AM at 7 PM every Sunday evening for Life Lessons with Bishop Love. Amen. Okay, at this time, we would like to welcome our first time visitors and returning friends. Do we have any? Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please stay standing and, and uh, one of the ushers will give you a uh, card for you to fill out. Welcome. Amen. Reminder that uh, uh, Stacy Evans actually will be doing our, the announcements next week, so um, please get any announcements to her by the end of service today, or you can send her an email before Saturday at noon. We do have some additional announcements. Uh, Sister Glenda wants to come up. Say amen as she comes. Say amen, amen. Good morning, church. I'm standing before you this morning on behalf of hospitality. Um, on the 16th, we have the international students coming in. Um, they are looking for some people to help with serving that Saturday night when they come back from the city. I won't be here, but if somebody wants to help out, we appreciate it. You can reach me. I can leave my phone number, um, and I can help um, God or whatever. And then that Sunday morning also. So if anybody does want to um, assist with that, you can get in contact with me or one of the hospitality team members. Sorry, I'm on a breath. <laughs> She's multitasking here. Okay. We want to also remind everybody about the Taste of Trinity on March 31st. Get ready. Get ready. We are celebrating our own Taste of Trinity uh, cuisines uh, that Sunday. So bring your special dish. Uh, and we just can't wait to have you come. There is a sign-up sheet out in the North Axe. So please sign up. Please sign up. Also, for those of you who have, who have not um, obtained your tax letter, please do so. Okay, with that being said, we are happy to be in the Lord's house here at Trinity Baptist Community Church. Our pastor is Dr. Michael J. Love. Trinity is a teaching ministry of God's holy word. We touch, we share, we love, and definitely care. And thank God for this opportunity to praise and worship him. So if you are looking for a church home, when Bishop Love opens the doors of the church, feel free to give your hearts to Christ and your hands in fellowship to Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our thought for the week, and this was really, not, and I switched it up, I gave you the welcome before the thought, but still this is good. I say, uh, and it stood out to me because this is something that I always would say to my kids. And that's my son walking through. Uh, say it to my kids, and... Uh, it's a good saying. It's, it talks about it doesn't get easier. No matter what, anything that you, anything that's worth it, don't. It's not easy. So it doesn't get easier, but you get, you can get better. It doesn't get easier, but you can get better. So I would always tell my kids. Um, I told them that when you want to settle something with someone, or you feel that somebody is doing something to you, whatever case may be, I say you never use your hands. You use your mind. And I would always tell them that I'm like, so well, how you going to get them is you're going to go hard in the classroom academic-wise. I said, because, in, you know, intellectually, whatever you get, they can't take that from you. And so, and I, and I would always encourage my kids to do that. Uh, for my son, since he's in football, I told him, I said, leave it out on the field. So when uh, he said, Mom, when they're talking smack out there to him, you know, sometimes they'll have the, um, the players macked up. But when they're talking junk, he said, okay, okay. But the next time we come back around, now I will see you again in this line. I'm going to make you feel me. <laughs> so he makes sure that uh, they remember him, okay? <laughs> so, you know, just remember that doing work, whatever you do in life, it's not always easy, but you can get better. You can get better. Amen? Now I'm going to turn it over to our youth ministry. Sister Deanna. Look at 
You know, we some proud mamas around here. <laughs> we some proud mamas around here. It's good news. It's good news. Anybody out there want to celebrate some good news? Amen. But before we do all that, who's celebrating an anniversary this month? Anybody who's celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of March? Nobody? But that's okay, because we're going to still celebrate here at Trinity. So this is the time we get together that we celebrate our students, our youth here at Trinity. We have some great news. It's not just good news. We have some great news. First, I want to start out uh, with some good news from uh, the Smith family. That's Corey Smith and Terry and Gina's daughter. And so Terry sent me this. I was traveling this week, and he sent me this te te text, and I'm, you know, looking at it. I'm enjoying it. So this morning I said, was I supposed to tell somebody else about that? Because <laughs> it was, like, so great. I felt so special. He said it to me, but I want to share with you. So this, this is written from Corey's uh, teacher. She said, today I had a discussion with a student regarding Black History Month. As a sponsor of our student activism club at our school, I was a bit remiss in not taking an active part in honoring this. However, today I asked one of the co-presidents to reflect on this and write something to send out to our teachers. Here is what she wrote. What does it mean to be black? Being black is more than a race. It's a culture. It's a continuous anger inherited from the mistreatment of our ancestors. It's your every move being considered a stereotype. It's not knowing your full history, but expected to learn that of America. It's taking pride in the heartache and success of one another. As Black History Month comes to a close, think about these three questions. Why do you think black history isn't focused on in our school? How could this lack of information affect our students? What can be done about the cultural deficit? I challenge you to research an African-American that influenced your subject of teaching and inform your students about him or her and his or her contributions to our society. That's what she wrote to her teacher. And the teacher says, well done. I challenge all educators to really think about this as it is easy to overlook when you are in a predominantly white school. That's written by our own Corey Smith, encouraging her teachers to teach more about our culture. Let's give it up for Corey Smith. We also have good news, good news, good news from Stefan Hatchett. I know Stacy's not here, but she says Stefan is doing well. Are there, I'm sorry. I'm looking for you right there. Stop changing seats. <laughs> there she is. Let's celebrate Stefan with the Hatchett family. Stefan is doing well at Hofstra University as a TV, video, film production major, and a marketing minor. Try to put that all on a degree. He's made the dean's list for his third straight semester. Let's just say that again. He's made the dean's list for the third straight semester and was selected to be a returning RA for next year. That's savings. Say cha-ching. Most importantly to his parents, he's also secured his first summer internship as a production assistant at Ravinia Festival. Is it paid? Cha-ching again. He's so blessed that we appreciate all the prayers from our Trinity family. Let's give it up for Stefan at Hofstra. We also don't want to forget our law student here in our congregation. Miss Doris sent me something that I'm so proud of her, and we want to celebrate her today. She said, good morning. Being a young kid, I had to tell you I got 80% on my midterm. That's in law school. She said the teacher said he didn't expect most first-year students to pass. All praises to God. Oh, happy day, she wrote. Congratulations, Miss Doris. Keep it going, keep it going. And I want to celebrate my two young men. One is Christopher's here um, as you know, his spring break. But I want to celebrate because I've told you that he's um, playing basketball at University of New Hampshire. But this is his first year out of the three he's been there playing his full year of basketball. And boy, 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 did he, did he do a great job. I was, so most of the time I'm someplace trying to watch, you know, it on the side when I'm supposed to be doing something else. But one, I was watching this particular game where, it was at, almost at the half, and he steps back, guarded, three-point, and hit it at a buzzer beater. I almost quit my job and became his personal cheerleader. <laughs> but then I woke up and realized I have bills to pay. So <laughs> I want to just celebrate him, because not only has he taken that um, being a leader on the court, but most definitely he's been a leader on the team and also in his grades, because he'll be graduating this May. So let's celebrate Christopher Lester. And I don't want to forget the little brother. 
Because you every once in a while you, your kids are reminded about which part of you they take after and which part they take after the other of uh, uh, your spouse. But Miles is Miles is most definitely uh, doing a great job at Harper as he prepares to go to Kansas University of Kansas this fall, and he's been doing great grades. And his attitude uh, about most definitely making sure that he qualifies for this particular scholarship we want him to. But one of the things I reminded him that my mother's always been a visual person and have a, a vision board. And, you know, as I said, you know, sometimes we get distracted and I have focus. And I said, sometimes we have to write things down to know what to pray about and know what to God to give us and what God to take away. And I'm really proud to say that he took the time out because I would say, oh, you got to go to Walgreens, of course, and get some magazines and cut the papers, you know, make the pictures. And he was like, Mom, I could just use the Internet. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> But he's created that vision board, and he's, you know, his, his, um, in his studies, he's trying to make sure he maintains that 4.0. And I'm just so proud of him today. I know he's on his third job because he gets 50 more cents every time. And he said, Mom, Mom, I'm, I'm just trying to make the money. And I was like, go, son. That's less we have to spend. So I just want to say I'm proud of Miles as well and his studies, and most definitely as he tries to make be the next millionaire. <laughs> So I know there's a lot about our kids, but we want to celebrate them because in that hallway at that school, it's not the easiest. And I want to keep continuing for all of us to encourage each other to pray for those teachers, pray for those administrators, pray for all of that that goes on in those hallways so that we most definitely can protect our children and most definitely keep that hedge of protection around him as we continue to pray for them. So. That's my good news for the day. So, who's got a birthday with Miss Dr. Lori? I know she has a birthday this month, but who else is celebrating a birthday in our midst? Oh, Russ? Oh, Alan, Mr. Allen is celebrating. Let's, we want to sing happy birthday to you. a blessing to be in the Lord's house and always to celebrate our young people. I saw Timmy sneak in here. What, what was that? What was that phrase again that you use uh, about? Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that one. I think I like the one about uh, if, something about uh, if, huh? Yeah, that, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that took me back to the day, but I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, David. I was, I was having the middle lost about that, but that's the one I like. Welcome. It's good to see you all, and it's a blessing on this day. Welcome to our congregation. Join us for our broadcast ministry on this Sunday. It's a beautiful day to be in the Lord's house, and uh, if you're still sleeping, then get, get on up and get on down here. If you, you can still make it in time. <laughs> It's a, it's a beautiful day, and uh, we're excited about it. We got, again, we got our international students coming on next Sunday, so uh, uh, please make sure you contact Sister Norman or, or Ron to let them know if you're available to participate in any way, hosting or, or participating in the Saturday events down in the city. It's always a very special time, and uh, you, will, you will be blessed by, uh, by sharing with those young people coming from those different countries, various different countries. Uh, it, will, it will touch your heart in a very special way. And so we're just always excited about being a part of that. And I tell you, when, 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 when we get a chance to just celebrate uh, not only our young folk, but uh, those of us who are stepping back into the university realm of their sister Pickens just setting the, setting the pace for us there. I know Henry, I think Henry just graduated just with, with something. Didn't he just get a, yeah, just got a master's in something? And we'll get to celebrate them, uh, get to celebrate them in the months ahead too. It, it, it just it's just inspirational it just it just touches my heart to uh, to see there's always uh, there's always something the lord has on your plate as long as we have breath amen and there's there's a, there's stuff that we can do to accomplish on the on the lord's behalf and he gives such beautiful opportunities has the lord blessed anybody this week yeah come on is there any praise in the house this week yeah uh, come on deacon 
We're going to worship God with our giving on this beautiful Sunday morning. And then we continue on with our young folk coming. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, come on, let's praise God. It's praise and worship. We're going to praise God right now in our tithes and our offerings. Let's just come forward. I'm going to read Philippians chapter 4, just verse 19 for you. And it says, And my God will meet all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Again, and my God will meet all, all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, just just to say thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for all the provisions that you have made for us, Lord God. God, we thank you that you supply our every need, Lord God. You give us just what we need when we need it, Lord God. Lord God, that all we have to do is just call on you, Lord God, and if it's your will, you will give us what uh, the desires of our hearts was. Right now, Lord God, we pray right now that uh, you would just have us to do what you have called us to do, Lord God, and that is to give us to give you back just 10% of what you have already blessed us with. Lord God, we pray right now that you would use what we give, Lord God, for, for your kingdom, Lord God, that uh, someone will be blessed from our givings, Lord God. And for those that don't have the means but have the desire, Lord God, to give, Lord God, but don't have the means, we ask that you would just meet them, Lord God. Just let them not feel guilty, Lord God, but let them just... Just give other things, Lord God. It's just not about monetary, Lord God, but it's about giving time, Lord God, and giving service, Lord God, and just helping someone else out, Lord God. You are pleased with that, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time of giving, Lord God, and uh, we ask that you just bless us in Jesus' name. We pray amen and amen.
Okay, we're not going to use the mic. It's on now? Hello? It's on. <laughs> we're live. These wonderful children are going to sign a song for you today. They've just learned it. They did an awesome job. And so the song is called Let It Be Me. So they're going to do a great job. Can we give our young folk a hand clap of praise one more time? Thank you, young people. Thank you so much. Uh, if you'll turn with me in your Bibles uh, to the book of Luke once again, seventh chapter. 
we want to put a fresh set of eyes on a very familiar passage of scripture, particularly as we come out of our, uh, our teaching over the first couple of months in the Explore God series. Uh, chapter 7, verses 18 through 23, we'll cut off right there. Um, Luke chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. And I jotted down verse 22 as our, uh, our key verse to read together. Give you a second if you're located that. If you've got that in your Bibles, can you give an amen? <clears throat> We've got the King James, the New King James translation, <coughs> excuse me, up on the screen. And if you don't mind staying, if you can, with me this morning, let's read that one verse and just uh, set the tone for our time together as we delve into the Word of God this, this precious Sunday morning. As we read together, it says, Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Is that all right as you take your seats, family? Subject matter for, the, for this morning, afternoon, is lessons in encouragement and assurance. Uh, we've, been, we've been talking over the past weeks uh, a number of important questions that are asked uh, and are being asked, particularly as it pertains to Jesus and it pertains to the relationship with God. And I found myself focusing in on the question that John asked in the midst of his time of imprisonment. Uh, it's a powerful question. Jesus gives an even greater response that we read together. And I wanted to just spend a little time with you around, uh, around this episode as we spend time in it. And in, in verse 18, let me flip back. In, in verse 18, it sets the tone. It says, John's disciples brought him, let me, John's disciples, and John, disciples of John showed him all these things all the things that Jesus had been performing that you see in the upper, uh, the upper part of chapter 7 and beyond. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus. You remember this, this episode saying the question, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And when the men come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he who should come, or look we for another? I've got two life lessons out of this episode that I just want to share with you. And the first one I jotted down is simply this. It's out of the question. When, when life circumstances cause doubt and cause fear and cause uncertainty, turn sincerely to Jesus for his peace, for his guidance, and his assurance. Can I say that again? When, when life circumstances cause doubt, fear, and uncertainty, turn sincerely to Jesus for his peace, his guidance, and his assurance. I need you to pull up a seat beside John this morning. I need you to pull a seat up beside him in this particular season of his life in which he has been imprisoned by the, uh, the governmental powers, uh, primarily because he has not only proclaimed that he's been a forerunner for the coming Messiah, but he's baptizing, and then he's abs absolutely called out some sin that has been permeating through the, uh, through, uh, through the, through the king's realm there. And he finds, himself, um, he finds himself in prison. He's been working there. The background that you get on John from the Gospels is, is just how he's a man of austerity, how he's a, he's a, he's a focused man. He's, his ministry that the Lord has laid on his heart is, is powerfully clear in front of him, and he, he doesn't deviate, doesn't seem to deviate from, from his calling. And so no matter what comes up against him or comes up and battles him, he seems to stand tall and proclaim just what God has given him, uh, the coming kingdom of God. And, and when his disciples look over and they see Jesus, you know, 
he, he, he lets them know that I'm not, the, I'm not Elijah, I'm not the Messiah, but I'm not even worthy to tie the shoes of, of the Messiah who is to come. And, and when Jesus comes and asks to be baptized, he says, how is it that I'm able to, why should I be baptizing you? And yet he sees, he sees, uh, he sees the, the symbolism and the, and the reality of, of God giving his pronouncement of, of confirmation in John's presence that this Jesus is indeed the one who is to come, the one who has been prophesied, who, who was to come and, and pay the price for the sins of mankind. And now he finds himself. Uh, he finds himself in a situation where, he, where his tomorrow is not promised. He doesn't know what to expect. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only thing he can sincerely expect is that he would lose his life, give his life for the cause that he has stood so powerfully for. And as they pull up a seat beside him, you have to begin to ask the question and wonder, what are you feeling now, John? What, what, are you, what is going through your mind now? What are, uh, how, 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 how are you wrestling? How are you dealing with your circumstances here? And he hears while he's in the jail <clears throat> that from his disciples, from, from those who have followed him, that Jesus is performing powerful miracles out there. He's, he's hearing that there's a teacher. He's teaching like no man has ever taught before. He's, he, he's hearing about things that, 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 that only God could do, uh, the, the forgiveness of sin, the healing of various diseases, the casting out of demons. He's, he's hearing about these marvelous things, and he's wondering inside in, in the jail, well, now, what, what must he be thinking in there? Here I am incarcerated. Here I am isolated. Here I am in a situation where my very life, I could very well lose my life <coughs> for standing for God, for proclaiming what God has called me to do. And, 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 and outside I'm hearing about, uh, the word is coming back to me about this work that's being done by the one that I've met. And he sends the question. He sends the question. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? And so as I attempt to pull up a seat beside him, I begin to wonder what's going through the heart of the man who's been faithful to God. Who's been seemingly undistracted in his focus. Lay down, is willing to lay down his life for God. Even among the strongest of us, uh, among us, there, there have to be moments when it feels like the circumstances of life are kind of crowding in and, and, and weighting us down. Am, am I preaching to anybody but myself in the house? E even, in, even, in, even among uh, the wisest among us, there seem to be, there have to be moments when it feels like the, 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 the doubts and the fears of life crowd in and try to distort and distract us from what God has called us to do. Uh, e e even among, even among the, the emotionally strong of, uh, of us, there, there have to be moments when when, when fear wants to try to creep in, because we, you know, we're, we're, we're fallen creatures, we're, 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 we're sin-stained individuals, and there's weaknesses and, and neediness among us. And if you live any time at all, you're going to run up against some kind of a circumstance in life that's going to set you back, going to make you question, make you wonder, well, why, why is this happening to me? And, and in the midst of that, why, why am I not hearing? Why, why am I not being delivered from this thing? Why, why do these things seem to come in on me? Why? Why do, why do bad things always seem to find their way to my doorstep? We lose sight sometimes of all the good things that are happening in our lives, and we have this tendency to focus in on the one or two bad things that crowd in and try to, we try to steal our joy in the midst of the journey. Amen? Well, that's the reality of humanity. That, that's, that's the journey of life. That's, that's the stuff that happens. John was not immune to that, clearly. I don't get the I don't get the the, the 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 context or the setting or the tone behind the question that comes from him from the jail, but 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 clearly he's looking for some sort of uh, some sort of uh, affirmation or confirmation that the things that that the very thing that he's laying down his life for, the very ministry that he's pouring himself out for, the very person that he's pointed his disciples to, the very reason for his purpose of, purpose for his life and reason for his being. Can, cannot be all dissolved in this moment when he now is about to lay his head down and perhaps give up the life. So, 
what, 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 what is it that he needs to hear from God in the midst of his time when, he's, when he seems to be all alone and he seems to be uh, uh, hopeless and helpless in the midst of his journey? He calls out. He hears about Jesus and he sends the question out. I, I, I contend that there's nothing wrong with sending the question out. But when you're in your prayer time with the Lord, he cares. Is he personal? Yeah, he cares about you. He loves you. He wants to, you're not giving God any information. He knows what's going on inside of our hearts. He knows that the, the intimacy of our wrestling moments, but he also knows what he's poured up inside of us. He knows how he's made the individual. He knows the strength that he's got. He's, he's, he's matured inside of us. And every now and then you need God to just touch you. You need a touch from the Lord to let you know that he's there with you in your moments of greatest need. John needed to hear from Jesus. Now you can try to handle, we can try to handle this by ourselves and, and we can wrestle with it in our own strength. And, and we'll find ourselves wallowing in that wilderness for much longer than we need to be in the wilderness. Or we can send we can, we can reach out prayerfully, spiritually to the Lord and open up our heart to him and say, Lord, why? There's something, there's something, uh, there's something cleansing about and refreshing and encouraging even about turning uh, to our Father in the name of our Savior and, and through the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit that now lives in the believer. There's a connecting point there. And we, we don't want to run past that too fast because you, you need to appreciate the, the beauty and the power and the uniqueness of having the opportunity to come to God the Father with our concerns and our needs. I mean, we could, we could just be out there in the wilderness, but, but he hears, my Bible tells me, cast all your fears on him, because Peter would say, cast all your fears on the Lord, because he cares for you. So we need to come and cast them. God invites us to cast them. God intimately, lovingly, graciously calls on us to, to lay it out in front of him, not just your big stuff, but bring your, bring your little intimate stuff, bring your small stuff. When you, when you talk to God on a regular basis, then it's not too much to come on and say, Daddy, I'm dealing with, matter of fact, I'm not just, not just the big stuff I'm dealing with, not just the big issues in my life, but I've got some small things down here that I'm wrestling with that I can't seem to find the answer with. I tried to do it, can't seem to get at it. Oh, Lord, I just need your wisdom. Can you just guide me along in this thing here because there's a door that I'm, I'm needing to make an answer, I'm needing to... to, to to get a question, get a question answered in, and I can't seem to get that. I don't know if I'm right about it. There's doubt and fear creeping in. I'm still wrestling with this thing, and I need to know, Lord, which path do you need me to walk? Which path do you need me to walk? And I, I don't want to step out until you show me where to step. I, I don't want to step ahead of you. I don't want to make my plan and then ask you to bless my mess. I need, to, I need to know where you want me to go, want me to be, want me to do, how you want me to act. And I know that even times when opportunities come, the enemy has this way of trying to take the joy out of the blessings that come in life. So, Lord, help, give me your eyes to see the trickery of the enemy and the world system that I'm in so that I don't get all confused by... Uh, the, by, 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 the, by the barriers that they put up in front of me, when indeed you're saying that are, those are merely stepping stones to the blessing that I have for you. So John hears, and he hears about these things going on, sends his disciples out, and he asks the question, are you the one, or should we look for another? To the world that's out there asking, are there multiple, we've dealt with this in the sermon, are there multiple ways to God? John basically is, is asking, are, are, is there, are there other ways to do what needs to be done? And the beauty 
of the question that it, it exposes an opportunity for God to Jesus Christ and make it plain that he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. So, so listen to his response. Listen to his response in verses 21 through 23. I jot it down. And in that same hour, 21 says, he cured many of their infirmities and their plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering and said unto them, I'll keep verse, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, how that the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. My second and final life lesson is this. When Jesus confirms his divinity, reaffirms it, shares his grace-filled compassion, and demonstrates his unlimited power, trust and obey him completely. Trust and obey him completely. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Is everything that I'm doing in vain? Or, or is there real purpose behind my living? God, are you real? Or, or, or have I just been fooling myself in the midst of all this this? this life journey going on here. Is this sacrifice really what you have in store for me, or is there another way to accomplish what you would have me to accomplish? When you pull up a seat beside John, you immediately begin to see some of, your, some of our own uh, question marks and the questions in the midst of life journey as we, as we sit beside John and we listen to him and we kind of step inside of his heart and maybe his doubt and maybe some of his fears or maybe some of his uncertainty. But in the process, we also see, we also get a glimpse of seeing just how God deals with, lovingly and graciously deals with us and in, in, our, in our moments when we really need him most. Uh, amen? In, in those moments when, we, when, when, when nobody else can answer, can feel the, the God-shaped hole inside, nobody else can answer the, the, the really questions of life, and, and you really just have to spend intimate time Listening to God. Oh, that's rich time. That is such rich time. Jesus does something in the midst of, in, in the front of these audiences. The first is to the disciples, uh, the John's disciples, as they ask the question, are you the one? Notice how the text picks this up. Matthew doesn't quite grab this. Luke grabs all the details of it. Uh, are you the one? Or should, I look for, or should we look for another? And the, immediate, the text uh, uh, immediately says, and in, and in that moment, Jesus demonstrates power. He gives them a visual. He gives them an illustration of who he is and, and, and through his miracle works. He says, you heard about it. Now you will see it for yourself. And when you eyewitness, when you witness it for yourself, then you can take it back and say, it's not just what I've heard, but it's what I've seen. It's, and, and then not only does he give them the visual, I love it when God steps into our life circumstances and he does something and he, and he blows up the situation and brings a blessing into our lives that we did not even expect. He kind of gives us, he says he kind of gives it to us in the way that, we, that he knows that we can digest it, we can, we can assimilate it into our faith walk. He comes to where we are in the midst of our moments of weakness and, and anxiety and fear and doubt and uncertainty. And he steps, he, steps, he steps compassionately and empathetically into where we are 
pulls up a seat beside us, allows us to lay our head on his breast, if you will, spiritually, and says, I've got this now. I've got you in the middle of this. You're not alone in this walk. Your life is not without purpose. It's not without direction. It's not without meaning. He says, As God created you with purpose in mind. I love that text you put up on the screen. Before you even born, God had a design and a purpose for you. And, he, and as you unfold and unpack that journey with your living, you will experience all that God has poured inside of you. So that whatever you accomplish, God is accomplishing in and through you. So don't let the world confuse you. Don't let the world weigh you down in fear. Don't worry about what tomorrow might bring. Just trust God in the midst of your journey. And he did that by saying, oh, by the way, here's some folk out of here that need a healing. Watch and see what God does. And then he gives him the verbal tutorial in the text that we love so much. And then Jesus answered them. He, he, he illustrated to them. He gave them the illustration demonstration, and then he gave them the teachable moment. He said, now go back and tell John. Tell him what you're seeing. And he points them towards something that would have, would have begun to well up inside of John, not only in his personal walk, but in his, in his, uh, his understanding of Old Testament theology. He says, take him back. When he started quoting this stuff, he says, take, take him back to Isaiah. I didn't ask you to jot these down, uh, to put them up on the screen. But he says, but, but I jotted them down. He says, take him back to Isaiah 29 and 18 through 19 when it says, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. He said, tell, tell, that, tell that to John. Let John reflect back on the prophecies that are being fulfilled in your very presence. It's not just these, that I'm performing these miracles as sideshows. It's a fulfilling of prophecy that helps you understand who it is that is now standing in your presence. You ask the question, are you the one or should we look for another? Go back and pull up Isaiah's prophecy and then see if it's not being fulfilled in your presence. He said, oh, take him, to, take him to Isaiah 61. You know the text. Isaiah 61, 1. Let me flip to it real quick for you. Now, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He performs the miracles, then he takes him to the teaching. And he says, take that message back to John while he's in captivity. And then let him know that it, that, that it is blessed in, in, in each and every one who shall not be offended in me. In other words, here's the work. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. In, in the midst of those moments when, 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 when we need to hear from God the most, and especially when he, when he feels like in your emotional, psychological makeup that he seems to be silent. Uh, he, he's not answering your prayer, my prayer, as quickly as we, we, we'd want him to answer it. Maybe not even answering it the way we want him to answer it. And, and it looks like that, that the, the, the enemy and, the, and, and, and our own fallen sense of emotional sense has a tendency to want to to turn on ourselves and bring doubt and fear into our very makeup. You, you know how it is. We, we wrestle with that thing. The enemy doesn't have to do a whole lot because we'll do it to ourselves if we're not careful. You know? <laughs> we really will. You know, it, just kinda, it just kinda bubbles up. You know how it is. Talk to me like I'm preaching to somebody other than myself in the house. You know, so you, you, get a, you can get five or ten great things going on, but the first time that something bad happens, you, all that great stuff goes out the window, and we're focusing on the, the one bad thing that's happened in our journey here. And, and somehow the enemy, will, as soon as you expose that woundedness, that weakness, it's like the enemy will just throw a dart at that thing. Every time you start getting happy, he'll throw a dart. Well, do you remember what it was like in the past? Every time you think you, you got a relationship that's over, well, you remember how it was back in the day when somebody did something bad to you? He, and, and he'll play around with that kind of stuff. And, and Jesus wants to remind us that, God, you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. 
old things are passed away and all things are becoming becoming new and 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 the only way that we can begin to walk in our newness and continue to walk in our newness is by continuous fellowship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and continue time in his word and so what Jesus does is he gives him the illustration that gives him the visual that he can attach his emotions to and then he takes him to the word and connects the, the illustration and the demonstration to the actual prophetic word of God. In other words, connect what you're feeling to what God is saying. And when you do that, you'll be able to stand firmly on your faith walk in fellowship with him. Your life is not in vain. He would come down later and say, what do you think you're going to see in John? You think you're going to see a weed fluffing in the wind here? You think you're going to see weakness? He said, among men, there's none greater than John. He, he's doing what needs to be done. God, he, what you notice is, just in case, what you notice is that he doesn't, you know, Jesus has all power. He can do what he wants to do here in this episode. He doesn't, he doesn't fly the, he doesn't cause the, the, the doors of the prison cells to fly open. He doesn't free him. He doesn't set him free. He, he, he wants him to understand that you're, you're, you're walking in your purpose, and when you walk in your purpose, God has got you covered. And here, here we go. And even if you have to give up, even if this is the end of your earthly journey, the reality of the prophetic word is that you ask, is this the one? Are, are you the one we're looking for, or should we look to, look to another? When you realize and recognize and understand that Jesus is the one that you're looking to, then, then there's, a, there's an extension to that message. The extension to that message for John's heart to grab hold of and for us to grab hold of today is that when he says, and I, and I am the I am who is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. When he says, don't let your heart be troubled, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you shall be also. Well, wait a minute. My life, now I'm telling you, John, your life has meaning and purpose not only down here in the physical realm, but you've got eternity promised for you so that even if you have to give it up for the cause right down here and you fulfilled your purpose in life at this moment, then you need to understand that God has a purpose and a plan and a place for you eternally, that what you've done will have impact, and they'll be talking about you generations down the road. So don't worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. I think he'd tell them, don't worry about tomorrow, because God has got all of that covered. He's got all of that covered. It just adds purpose and power and peace to our message, to his message to us, when he demonstrates to us not only his who-ness, but his power and his grace and mercy and love. And then inspires us to step on out unashamedly fearlessly, lovingly, boldly, and share this good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We've got an opportunity, family. We've got a rich opportunity. Uh, oh, God, this, this just popped in my head, so let me just pop it out. I, I, just, in, just, just, in, just in praying and thinking and, and listening to this morning, I, 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 I think it was Dr. David Jeremiah who was on. He was, he's doing a series around the country now on the end times. And this is, this is just me rambling, so y'all just stay with me for a second. And, uh, and, and he was talking about uh, how the prophecies are, are being fulfilled that are leading to the coming of Christ. And as I listened to him talking about, you know, he just laid out several things, you know, the, the reunification, you know, the, the, the reunification of Israel, you know, the, the Roman Empire being coming back together through this European Union and pointing to signs and symbols. That his, his, his core point is that Jesus, Jesus could come back any moment. Uh, the table is set. 
the stage is set, and we could caught, be caught up to be with him. Now, this isn't my subject matter for today. <laughs> but what it does, what it does when I hear that is continue to place the urgency on my heart and spirit to share this good news of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, with anybody and everybody he sends across my path. Uh, if, if he could come back any, in the twinkling of an eye, and he sure could. He's biblically and scripturally absolutely on point. Is there somebody that needs to hear this in your circle of influence? Is there, is there somebody that, that, that may need to have it reinforced in your circle of influence? I would just want to encourage you to love them enough to share this news, to take this seriously. Uh, it's not a time to be going through the motions. It's just not a time to be going through the motions. And folk who can find 550 million distractions for not wanting to know Jesus or not even want to worship him. It's just not that time. And so if it's anything that we can do to make a difference and loving them enough to share it and build some urgency in their life about, about coming to know Jesus and walking with Jesus, my prayer is that we just, the Lord would just use us, utilize us, in any way he feels is the appropriate way to lovingly share this good news. Can, can we do that? Can, is that? Is that too much to ask, church family? Huh? Can we do that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Uh, circumstances of life will take care of themselves. This, this, is, this is critical. This is critical. Family, friends, coworkers, Whoever, whoever God sends across your path. Let, let, let me pray us out. I'll, Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for blessing us with uh, another opportunity as family to come together in your house of prayer. Thank you for your word, Lord. You keep feeding us so richly. Help us to absorb it, take it in, integrate it into our thinking and our being, and then share it out this world dying in its darkness and then Lord as we plant the seed of your good, your good news your, your word Lord we're praying that you will continue to touch some heart and prepare that ground to receive it receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and have that personal relationship back again, Lord. In the twinkling of an eye, we're we excited and looking forward to that day. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we give you the honor, the glory, the praise, and we thank you for all that you are and all that you do. We say thank you, Lord, and amen. And amen. We're going to open up the doors of the church. We're going to extend an invitation. We never want to leave God's house without extending an invitation to you stand together and you're seeking a church home a church family all you got to do here is come down front and let us welcome you home and your christian experience or as a candidate for baptism the doors of the church are open invitation to our membership is extended to you when you come you ought to know him you ought to know him you get to know him Nothing better.
heads bowed and with our eyes closed, our hearts humble before the living, true and living God, assuming an attitude of prayer and us extending our hands in prayer, lifting our hands in praise to him. Now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let all God's people say amen. God bless you and God keep you. Give somebody a holy hug before you leave. Invite somebody.